my name is Pris Latte and I'll be promoting a famous tourism spot in Malaysia. I believe that Petronas Twin Towers, also known as KLCC, is the first place that pops into our mind when we think of places to recommend for tourists. So, what makes KLCC a tourism spot? KLCC is officially inaugurated by the 4th Prime Minister, which is Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, on National Day of Malaysia, 31st August 1999. During that period of time, KLCC is actually the tallest building in the world after overcoming the world's tallest building, which is Sears Tower in Chicago and World Trading Center in New York. It took six years for Petronas Twin Tower to reach the sky high. Therefore, Petronas Twin Towers actually stands for Malaysia's pride, victory and modernized country. Right now, Surya KLCC is the best shopping mall in KL with many shopping attractions for local and visitors, making it to be the best place in Malaysia for tourists to visit. That's all I would like to share about this amazing place. Thanks for listening and bye! Hi guys, today I will bring you to visit one of the largest and oldest Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia. It opens daily 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. No entrance fee is needed. Now we are in front of Tianhou Temple. Let's go inside and see. Tianhou Temple was built in 1894 when the Chinese Hainanese community made KL their home, a shrine to Guan Yin, the goddess of mercy. This temple is still a key place of worship. The large temple sits on top of a hill, offering a majestic view of the city in addition to its already breathtaking architecture centering on prosperity and luck. You can often see both devotees and visitors burning joysticks, kneeling in prayer, and pressing offerings at the feet of the statue. Here also is a popular wedding venue among KL Chinese local. So, this end the tour at the temple. It's very impressive. If there's a chance, you should come and visit too. Bye! Malaysia is a very unique country because of the diversity of races, cultures and villages. Uh, Malaysia is mainly made up of three races which are Malay, Chinese and Indians and of course other equally important indigenous tribes. All of us living in a harmonious environment and the proof is we often embrace each other's culture by celebrating each other's festival such as Hari Raya, Chinese New Year, and Deepawali. This is what makes Malaysia strong and special because we believe that when there is unity, there is always victory. Besides that, the food in Malaysia. Having various races and cultures means there are different types of food and cuisines. Um, Malaysians sometimes like to combine two or more cultural food recipe to produce one food. For instance, uh, the curry laksa meat. It combines um, Chinese noodles, Indian curry, and Malay herbs. And this demonstrates the multicultural interactions in Malaysia has created hybridization while still preserving the unique of each cultural community. Malaysia is one of the most beautiful country and fascinating tourism destination in Southeast Asia. Malaysia is also a multi-ethnic, multi-culture, and multilingual society. The weather is not too hot, not too cold, but it is catalytic.
There are so many interesting places that you can visit in Malaysia, such as Sarawak Cultural Village. And if you love to go to some islands, you can visit Sipadan Island, Matanani Islands, and Likitan Island. This place is Jayen Garden. Jayen means where friends are made. This garden is located in Putrajaya. It symbolizes Malaysia-China friendship. Malaysia is rich with its biodiversity. The large numbers of species is due to tropical change, favorable conditions for the growth and evolution of plants and animals, as well as presence of great diversity of habitats in Malaysia. These habitats is includes the seas, rivers, forests, and mountains. Malaysia is a country which is loved by tourists for their visit in Southeast Asia. This country has something to offer to everyone. I'm Vicky and now I'm going to talk about a few tourism places in Malaysia. Since I stayed in Malaysia for 22 years, I've been to many places in our country. I've been to Malacca, Kuala Lumpur, Kedah, Pulau Pening, Sabah, etc. But there's a few places that I love the most. Mm, last year, I went to Pulau Tioman. We went there by boat from Merseng Jeti, which is located in Johor Bahru. And that place is very relaxing and it is very recommended for people who love the sea. We went scuba diving and snorkeling and saw a lot of beautiful coral and sea creatures there. And the seawater is super clean and clear. So I would recommend there for people who love nature. And for people who don't like the hot weather in Malaysia, since our weather is quite hot, we should go to Genting Island because the temperature there is quite cold a bit as it is above the mountain. There are casinos and theme park in Genting, so I think it is very suitable for family. Hello everyone, welcome to Malacca. This is Chongka Street, also known as Chongka Wall. Chongka Street is the Chinatown area where you can find yourself interesting stuff to see and do. You can taste all kinds of food, drinks, pizza at the stores, cafe or restaurants. There's a night market at Chongka Street on Friday, Saturday and Sunday. The atmosphere here is surrounded with lovely people. Other places to check it out in this area are Baba Nyonya Heritage Museum, Chongka ATA, Mami Chongka House, Hard Rock Cafe and so on. Make sure you check it out! This is Samsukong where you can get yourself a local mat snack. They are selling selection of snacks, drinks and cooking condiments. You can drop by here to buy some for your family and your friends. Also, you can get the famous durian chendo over here. Last but not least, this is Pamosa Chicken Rice Bowl. In Lagar, first thing comes to our mind will be Hainanese Chicken Rice, which they serve in white rice bowl and white steamed chicken. The interior design here is spacious and cozy. The restaurant here is always crowded with tourists during weekends, and even locals also come here to try this. Thank you for watching! Salam sejahtera dan selamat datang ke Malaysia, the truly Asia which has multicultural and multi-religious nation. Malaysia has various tourist attractions to visit, and today we are going to focus on the few iconic sites in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Petronas Twin Towers are twin skyscrapers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The 88th floor towers 
standing 452 meters tall, was once the tallest building in the world from 1998 to 2004. This is the most iconic site in Kuala Lumpur. Along with the Petronas Twin Tower, the Menara Kiao Tower is Malaysia's most recognizable and popular landmark. It is the seventh tallest freestanding telecommunications tower in the world. The Kiao Tower has been drawing the local and foreign tourists for the past 23 years due to its unique vantage point and myriad of other attractions, including the lush greenery of Bukit Danas Forest Reserve, which surrounds the tower. Batu Cave at Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia are the most important Hindu religious sites outside of India and they are a focal point for Hindu Malaysians, particularly during the Typhoon. The campus attracts nearly 5,000 visitors a day who came to climb the grueling 272 steps up to the cave. Now I would like to share my thought about tourism of Malaysia. I am proud to know that our country was one ranked number 9 in the World Tourism Ranking and I believe most of us agree that our country is famous for its rich culture, food of course, and the natural attractions. Among all these factors, I personally think that our rainforests, um, islands, beach and sunshine are the strongest selling point. I've been to few beach and islands of our country, all of them are fascinating. However, I feel really disappointed and shame whenever I see so many pollution on the beach and in the sea. I understand that our tourism industry is having a hard time now due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but I think it is a good time not to only encourage domestic tourism, also to educate people to take care of our environment. In my opinion, activity like Kotong Royong program to clean up the environment once in a while isn't an effective solution. The most fundamental solution is to educate and raise civic consciousness of people. Lastly, no matter if I win or lose in these competitions, I hope my advice will be helpful and be considered by the Ministry of Tourism Malaysia. Thank you. Hi, good day everyone. My name is Jin Shi. In this video, I'm going to introduce an island located in Johor, which is Pulau Pulau Aur is a small and pristine island situated 65 km apart from Mersin Jetty. It is a home to numerous unique sea creatures and also coral reef. It is also a perfect vacation to go for scuba diving and also snorkeling. Pulau Aur was appointed as a marine park in 1994. Later in 2003, it was nominated as a national park due to the rich presence of mangrove swamps and the rainforest. The most significant luxury on Pula Aur is the beautiful nature provided by the island itself. The crystal clear water allowed divers to discover the underwater world, teeming with unlimited marine life clearly. If you are planning a trip to Pula Aur, April to June is the best month to go. In between the months, Scuba diving and snorkeling will be favorable because the sea is calm and safe. I hope that you will enjoy the experience and atmosphere around the island and thank you. Hi, this is Kaylee. Today I'm going to share with you one of the most popular tourist attractions in Malaysia, which is Cameron Highland. Most visitors come here for its natural beauty, chill environment, and fresh cool air. The biggest highlight in Cameron Highland is the Ball Tea Center located in the Sungai Palace. Without any doubt, it has one of the most breathtaking views in Malaysia. You can sit back and relax, sipping a cup of freshly brewed homegrown tea, and also while overlooking the large scenic tea plantation. Next is the Big Red Strawberry Farms which will cost you about RM25 to pick your own fresh hydroponic grown strawberries. And right next to the strawberry farm is the Cactus Farm. There are all sorts of cactus and plants and flowers so over here. I'm sure your mom will love it. Other than that, you can also visit the Bee Farm, Lavender Garden, Butterfly Farm and also the Sheep Sanctuary or you could also visit the Morning and Night Market all located in the area Bingchang. 
These tourist destinations are all very kids friendly which is very good for a short family trip over the weekend but if you're more of a sporty person then maybe you can go for a hike in the mossy forest and enjoy the waterfall and mother nature. Alright that's all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching! Welcome back, I'm Rachel T. So today I am going to introduce you one of the interesting places in Malaysia. So without further ado, let's just start, okay? So this is a virtual kind of introduction. So as we all know that Malaysia has its own tradition and we have different heritage and this makes Malaysia so unique and beautiful because we have diversity in terms of races. That is why we have different practices. So today I am going to introduce you somewhere very special and very relaxing. So this place lets let you to enjoy your mother nature and get close with it. Yes, it is part of this. So what can we do in Port Dissent and what can we eat or even go? Of course the beach. Port Dissent is very well known with the Golden Sand Beach and you can do a lot of activities in Port Dissent. For snorkeling, diving, and of course, you can eat a tasty ice cream and just have a sun baby. So, next one, it is the Portison Ostrich Farm. If you are a fan of animals, this is the best place for you to go and visit. And last but not least, we also have the 3D Art Gallery and of course, the Upside Down Museum. So, if you are a person who mesmerizes good painting and artwork, this is the place where you shall go. Okay, so these are the places that you may bond with your family, friends, or even close, uh, close ones. So, yeah, hopefully I'll see you in person. And I'm Rachel, and I'm signing out. Bye! Hi! This video is to promote one of the Malaysia tourism. So the place I'm going to promote is Pulau Ketam. Why? Why I will choose Pulau Ketam? Because um, I'm from Kering. Pulau Ketam is depart from Kering. Traveling by ferry take around 45 minutes. So uh, why I chose here because I really love the environment. Because actually I prefer the Kampong lifestyle if compared with the city. You can temporarily escape the bustle and hustle of the city. You can experience the fun of the lifestyle. So that's why I chose here. Pulakata also known as a crab island. And actually Pulakata is a very very small village. It's a small kampong but most of them are Chinese. So uh, it's a Chinese kampong lah. So uh, there are no car, no motorcycle, only allow bicycle and allow electric bicycle. So everybody just walk and ride their bicycle. So um, and also beside that, they have a lot of activity. You can take a boat to the sea to feed the eagle. Then you can take a lot of uh, photo because they really have a good environment lah. So that's why I very very love there. Hi everyone, today I'm going to promote my state of Kaja. Let's have a look. Ta -da! The first place I'm going to promote is Sate Kajang. Sate Kajang, the very famous and delicious food in Kajang. Once you are tasted, you won't forget it. Mmm, sedapnya. Next place is Brokahi. If you want to experience how is the sunset and sun dried, just climb up 8,000 to 180,000 feet to experience the sunset. Eco Majestic, the very famous place in Kaja. One of the famous in this Eco Majestic, which is nature level who come and have a look, a beautiful place over here. You can take pictures and spend time with your family. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.